Look, mainstream fragrances such as Sauvage and Aventus, they work, obviously. But I want to introduce the idea to you that you may be missing out on some really cool and really incredible fragrances if you're not taking your journey deep enough. It's fantastic to wear mainstay recommended fragrances such as Sauvage, such as Aventus, but you run the risk of smelling like everybody. So I want to compile here eight fragrances that I think are just as sexy and just as compelling but they're fragrances you may not have heard of recommended as much. First one is Oud Paleo by Diptyque. This is my scent of the day today. If you've heard of Oud, don't be scared. This is a very masculine, straightforward and down to earth Oud fragrance. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Oudis for Han. If you don't know what that is, I'll get into that in a second. But for those of you who watched my autumn list, you knew that I wanted to have this fragrance that was like Oudis for Han, but I didn't want to pay the phenomenal price tag. In the end, I went for Oud Touch by Frank Olivier, and although that was good, I actually felt as though it had quite a few weaknesses. It was quite synthetic, it didn't really last. And when I smelt this at Harrods Beauty the other day, I thought, this is the one that I should have gone for. And of course, I did it, and now I have both, but this is clearly the winner. So Oudis for Han and this and Oud Touch all share a common ground, which is that they are Oud fragrances, but they are actually pleasant, they're not skanky they're straightforward. Especially this one, this one actually gets quite fruity as it dries down, and the dry down is actually really, really pleasurable and really enjoyable. This for me is sexy because of the oud, rose, and kind of fruity vibe that commands masculinity, makes me feel a little bit more confident, and is really, really quite mature. I think that this fragrance could go head to head with Aventus on any given day of the week and twice on Sundays. What I'd recommend is if you do get a chance to try this, please put it on your skin. There's also like a natural, sexy, sweet musk fragrance, and this is very unusual for a diptyque scent. This is great, and I feel really confident and really in charge when I'm wearing this. On the flip side of that is this. This is Prada's Ombre, or Amber. I rediscovered this recently, actually, by talking to a client of mine in a fragrance consultation. We were talking about fragrances that he wanted. He wanted something that was subtle, something that was cleanly, something that was sexy and not too masculine, but not too feminine. He wanted something right in the middle. And I pointed him to this, and I got some great feedback saying that he really, really loved this. I've already talked about many times on this channel that the Italians believe that the cleaner a man is, the sexier a man is. And this is that philosophy to a T. Very sexy, very soapy, clean smell that will totally get good positive reactions. This is just, this is pretty banging, to be honest. That's, that's the truth. It's just, a, it's just freaking sick, really. It's just... You know what I mean? This is a really underrated fragrance. In fact, I feared it to be the most underrated fragrance of the entire Vulgari Man line, even though this is probably creeping up to be my second favorite fragrance in the line. People talk about, including myself, Vulgari Man in Black, Glacial Essence, uh, Wood Neroli, things of that nature, Extreme, and they're all great. But this is like the popular fragrance turn at Hermes, but it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot more bolder, and it's a little bit more complicated. Turn at Hermes is uh, Dirty Orange and ISOE Super. That's an oversimplification, but that's how I feel it is. This has got layers upon layers and is totally perfect for a springtime setting or even colder days and colder nights like this. This is very refreshing. It has got that orange essence smell that, that will get you to where you want to be. And it's very sexy in its own unique way. And that's the thing that I love about these fragrances. These are all simple. They're all to the point. They're all straightforward fragrances, but they're off the beaten track. They're sexy, but in a very unconventional way. Just to clarify, we've got four niche fragrances and four designer fragrances. So we'll carry on with designer for now. This is Infrared Spice Bomb or Spice Bomb Infrared. Now, this is a hyped fragrance. This is a fragrance that is popularized and talked about, but I feel as though uh, Extreme and the regular Spice Bomb get more attention. If you want something that's really quite different in the designer world, then you really should go with this. Similar to this, this has got like an orange, but it's more like a cup into blood orange, along with the spices from Spice Bomb. Really, really kind of a juxtaposition between the smells, but you put that together, you clash it, and you get a really innovative and captivating scent. Uh, this is sexy because the orange makes it clean and inviting and warm, but the spices also give it some real depth. Speaking of fragrances that have depth, I don't think that we can get any more deeper than this. This is one of my favorite fragrances that I've bought this year, and I think one of the best releases in maybe the past 10 years. This is Tom Ford's Noir Extreme Parfum. Now, I don't want to grunt uh, or get aggressive like Jeremy does sometimes, or when he used to, but... Ugh! 
I think that was, I think that was all right. Yeah, you know, uh, that's how this fragrance kind of makes me feel. It's like a proper uh, kind of uh, fragrance. I just, I won't do that. I just look as though I'm having a stroke. But this is a really, really interesting and definitively masculine fragrance. And what I love about this is the picture that it really paints for me. And just listen to what I have to say with this. And just listen to this, right? This is what this truly, like, this is what my imagination is fueled by when I smell this. It smells like a Victorian Christmas Eve, like you've just gone to the theater, you've had a great night out, you're now in, everything's cool, everybody's excited for Christmas. It's like that, and horse poop. And you put that together. I'm not, look, listen, we're friends, right? We're all adults here. It just works. I promise you, it just works. There's something a little bit fecal about this, but it works in tandem with the Christmassy Eve thing. And I'm not even joking. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic. And I lap that shit up, uh, quite literally, actually. Next one is this. This is Tobacco by Dior. I had the opportunity recently to buy Udis for hand, but I didn't. I went for this. And instead I got out of the Dior Privé line this. And let me tell you something. This isn't just a fragrance. To me, this is an achievement. This is a genre defining achievement. Let me explain. We all know that tobacco is very popular. It's one of my favorite notes or so I understood. But the truth of the matter is, is that the tobacco genre has been dominated by tobacco vanille clones over and over and over again to the point where you felt as though you couldn't have tobacco without that cloying over the top vanilla. This takes the humble tobacco and simplifies it, dries it out and gives it a stage that I don't feel as though many mainstream fragrance houses have been able to give this fragrance for a long time. I shouldn't be mixing my fragrances here, but I really, really just love this too damn much. An incredible opening that gives you the full range, the full spectrum of tobacco. What this is gonna do for you is that this is going to warm you up. It is so cozy, it is so snuggly, but yet it is so authoritative and it is such a confident fragrance. In a similar lead to a Oud Paleo by Diptyque actually, in fact, I bought these two on the same day. I think that's just kind of the vibe that I was going for in the store. A very beautiful fragrance that is gonna get you a specific sort of attention. I think that women are probably gonna enjoy this. I, I don't know the likability scale of this, but I have a feeling that lots of people are gonna like this on you. And I think that the number one comment that you're probably gonna get with this is, oh, that's different, that's interesting. My girlfriend really enjoys it. The people who I work with really, really enjoy it. And you know, it's just an all round brilliant fragrance. As you can see, I took the opportunity to get the free engraving there. So I've got the word apprentice on there. That's really cool. But tobacco to me is uh, more than just a great fragrance that will get you great attention and get you compliments and all that kind of stuff. But I also think that it's a positive move forward in the entire tobacco genre in itself. It's quite the positive step for it. Okay, so you might be sick of me talking about this, but I'm not gonna stop talking about it just yet. Rule of 72 by 2787 Parfums. You know, I've talked about this a lot. Um, it's just the visual that I get from this. To me, this is a very somber, very beautiful green leather fragrance. If you're a fan of ombre leather, if you're a fan of Tuscan leather and, and the leather kind of thing, this is, um, you know, it is that, but it's it's greener, it's more springtime orientated. And to me, how I've always envisioned this is that it smells like you're um, in a stone sort of cabin. And the stone cabin is very cold, it's kind of wet. And on the outside, there's a beautiful green meadow. And it's the juxtaposition of those two images that I think that really works with this. Another great fragrance I think could be like a, a great antidote to fragrances, you know, like citru overly citrusy fragrances, um, citrusy designers, things like that, is this, this is oranges and lemon say the bells of St. Clement. This is kind of like, um, a little bit like Aqua de Palma. You know, I recently had somebody who, in fact, oh my God. Yeah, I recently had a, a client on my fragrance consultations who said they really liked Vetiver, but they, they weren't finding anything that was working for them. It was a, a particularly sort of tough client actually, because he only liked really specific Vetiver fragrances. Um, 
and I should have actually recommended it. I will literally send him an email right now. I will, I will recommend him to this because this is a beautiful uh, citrusy fragrance that has a real cushioning of vetiver. If you're an old school vetiver fan, you like vetiver by Guerlain, you like vetiver by Roger Dove, um, then this is really gonna appeal to you, but it's got like an extra uh, interesting layer of citruses you know, like that comes from Aqua de Palma and things like that. So I want to re-emphasize here that all these fragrances to me are very sexy fragrances, but they are sexy in such a unique and interesting way. And finally, this is Elixir by Centauri. One of the most boldest fragrances that I think I've smelled in a while. Um, if you're somebody who really wants like beast mode fragrances, if you're somebody who wants fragrances that are really going to be uh, loud and capture the attention of everybody, this is uh, that fragrance. This kind of in the, is in the same realm kind of as Givenchy Gentleman Reserve Privé, but this is more designer friendly and, and huggable and kissable, whereas this is a lot stronger. This is uh, somebody who you know, smokes cigars, who uh, drinks a, a lot of whiskey. And you have to be very, very confident and you have to be really reassured of yourself to wear something like this. It's a beautiful, beautiful boozy vanilla uh, scent and I'd highly recommend it. I think that it's so sexy because it's just such a domineering fragrance. It's a fragrance that is just inescapable uh, when you wear it. The main point of this list is to showcase to you that there is a whole world of fragrances that are out there and please just don't feel as though you have to limit yourself to the Sauvages and the events of the world. And if you do want bespoke help with me as your guide, I am still doing my fragrance consultations. In fact, I'm doing a third off deal throughout November and December, so the consultations for 45 minutes are now only $57. Click the link down below and you and I can have a one-to-one -one personalized Zoom consultation where we'll talk about your fragrance journey. And at the end, I'll give you a report of your own fragrance taste. But there you have it. These are some incredibly sexy fragrances, all really interesting, all really dynamic, and I do hope that you go and check them out. Anyway, I'm The Fragrance Press. I'll see you soon. Bye.